It's good. Okay. Okay. Good morning. So I hope everything about the labs are settled, right? Right. Uh, yes. Like uh, in the event that you do not have a single white space at all, like I didn't even take one chair of my class in school. Um, what's my best option? How many How many hours do you enroll? I'm taking like 17 right now. 17? Yeah, and it's got me in an all, all line version of the lab. There's no white space on my schedule. You are EET student? Uh, yeah, computer engineering technology. Okay, CET. You cannot enroll in your online lab. You you by yourself? No, no, no. Uh, the over in the Bobby Thad building. Oh, okay. yeah. My advisor did it. Uh, so you said you do not have time on Monday and Wednesday yeah, from yeah, the yeah. schedule literally from 9:45 till like past three every day. Monday you like just You too. Okay. You know, we have a lot of students, and um, we don't have that resources to open another section for you, so we need somebody to help you, right? You cannot do by yourself. So it's, uh, uh, yes. How long does it take to finish all of it? The lab? I think it's like, uh, if you have some fundamentals in here, it's like one hour or at most two hours. Okay. So if you are late for one hour or need to leave early one hour, that's, I think that's fine. Like a Monday, it's some weird time where I can do it, or a Thursday, or Friday, but... Okay, we can discuss this later, alright? Uh, we finished the first chapter, so any questions? What? <laughs> when do we do the first chapter? We already finished the first chapter. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we was in the other building. We didn't know the first chapter. Yeah, that's right. So we have, uh, okay, let me write, we have a website, eh? the lecture notes, and the PPT already on the website. So, and also you read the textbook. It's the, the first chapter is relatively easy, just unit, like um, scientific notation, okay? So all these things are not very difficult. But the homework is due... Homework two. Yeah, homework two, yes. Okay, homework number one. <laughs> but you need to submit the homework too. Okay, so that is uh, September 6th, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Just like a review of so what you want. So any questions about the homework? I know somebody already emailed me about the questions. So I can show you one. For example, 5.5 represents this, write this into a engineering notation. Uh, so uh, he is confused about it. 5.5 .5 equals 10 times 10 to the 0. So is 0 a multiple of 3? Yes, so 0 is a multiple of 3. So 5.5 .5 equals 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 0. That's all. Yeah. Eh? Any other questions? No. No? All right, that's cool. All right. Uh, today we are going to discuss the second chapter. We are going to spend two units to finish this chapter. Huh? And yes, this time and uh, uh, Thursday. And the homework will the second homework will be due next Thursday. Uh, I think this one is also like a, uh, you may already know this from high school. Right? So it's from chemistry or physics, uh, most probably from uh, uh, chemistry. Right? We know uh, made, uh, uh, made up from uh, atoms. Eh? So atom, we have an atom model. So one famous model is uh, called ball atom model. Atom model is useful for visualizing atomic structure. Uh, so we can see here, uh, in, the, in the center, we have a, uh, uh, it's called nucleus, right, in this part. And we have a, protons and we have neutrons. Protons are represented by this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, color, this, uh, this color, this color, right? And uh, this uh, gray is the neutron. We know the proton, each proton has one unit of a positive charge. And the neutron 
has a nothing. And outside, we have electrons. These electrons are in shells, discrete shells. That means they are not totally random. They must be uh, arranged in shells. Uh, and each proton has uh, one unit of a negative charge. So this uh, negative charge and positive charge, they are in the same quantity, but they are opposite sign. Okay. So this. Uh, Electrons are represented by these groups. The atomic number is the number of protons and this determines the particular energy. So here, if we count how many protons inside, for example, carbon, the number of protons is six. Right? That means any element, if the, proton, the number of protons is six, that is carbon. Right? If it's not six, it is not carbon. So this number of protons determine what element it is. Uh, carbon is six. What is uh, nitrogen? Seven. Right? So what is uh, oxygen? Eight. Eight. Right? So if you change the proton, that means you change the matter. Uh, question, can you change the number of protons? Right? Do you have any way that you can change the number of protons? Can you? Make it for example, I give you an arm, can you change it into gold? Right? Because the arm has and gold have a different number of protons. If you can change the number of protons, then you can change the iron or copper into a gold. Can you do that? Anyone can do this? I don't know. I want to know. <laughs> okay, so the number of protons determines the, the type of everything. Another one is uh, uh, the number the sum of the proton and the neutron. Right? In the carbon situation, the number of proton is six, the number of neutron is also six, so that is 12. So 12 gives us the, how heavy the, uh, the, the atom is. Right? Uh, this. But the number of neutrons is not necessarily equal to the number of uh, uh, protons. In the neutron, neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So in here, outside, the number of electrons will be equal to the number of protons. Right? So positive and negative, they cancel each other. So that's why the total atom is a neutral. Right? Not positively or not negatively charged. OK, this is the shell, the structure of the atom. Right? The outer shell is called the valence shell. So this one here. This example is, uh, can somebody tell me what is this? What material is this? What matter is this? First of all, let's see, this guy is a new, neutral at, uh, atom. So that means the number of uh, new uh, electrons equals the number of uh, protons. So how many electrons do we have here? We have two inside, we have uh, eight in the middle, and we have four. So that is uh, four. Uh, 14, right? What is 14? Silicon. Silicon, right? Right. Uh, so the proton number of proton is also uh, 14. Yeah. One important uh, property of the valence shell is uh, how many atoms, uh, how many electrons are on, on the outer side, uh, on the valence shell. So in this example, we have four. Uh, if there's only one, usually it is metal. Uh, the reason is when the when the two matters are like close to each other, right, put together, that one is easily to get lost. Right? If there are two, still easy to get lost, but a little bit more difficult. And three and four, in this case, because uh, for stable shell, valence shell, we need uh, how many? Eight, right? Yeah. So in this case, we have four, so it's like uh, Right in the middle, and uh, not very small as one or two, not very large like a seven or eight. If eight, it's called no wall, right? So it's very stable. It's not easy to lose, not easy to get. Right? Seven is easy to obtain another one. Right? So in this case, this is four, so it's right in the between. So what kind of material is this? If there's only one or two, it's easy to lose, usually it is called metal. 
If there are seven or six, it's easy to get. That kind of thing is like eight, it's like an insulator. And right in the middle, what is it? Like, like semiconductors. Yeah. Eh? Like silicon, these are semiconductors. Yeah. We are going to discuss a lot of, uh, for example, uh, component like uh, 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 transistors. It's made of uh, uh, silicon. So, So this silicon is a conductor, translator, an insulator, or a semiconductor. So the answer is a semiconductor. Right? The reason is that the number of electrons on the valence shell is four. Right? Not easy to lose, not easy to obtain uh, additional ones. Right? Any questions on this? So if you want to make some conductors like the, the copper wires right? and the PCB board, so we use metal. So copper, how many? Electrons are on the valence shell. Anyone remember that? Copper? Mm, uh, 29. On the outside. Yeah, 29 maybe is the total. But the 2 is the inside, 8 is uh, the second shell, then another 2, then like some. So on the outside, because we know copper is like uh, there are 2 on the outside. So that's easy to lose, so it's a uh, conductor, right? How about the silver? It's a 1, right? And if you remember some uh, chemicals, is a uh, silver, like, for example, AgCl, right? That's not. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, copper is a CuCl2, so that's means that uh, Okay. Uh, these are chemistry. We don't care too much here. We just know if the number of electrons on the valence shell is like right in the middle, four, right? So that will be a, a semiconductor. If it's one or two, that will be metal. Uh, this one is a sodium. Uh, sodium has only one outside. So that is a, a metal, uh, a conductor. So sodium is highly reactive and easily give up, uh, gives up its single valence electron. For this reason, it's not used in electric work. It's not stable. Actually, uh, sodium can burn in oxygen, right? So not no metals have either complete or nearly com uh, complete outer shells, so they make a per electric conductor or the perfect insulator. Okay, suppose we have two electric charges. So one is positive, another one is uh, uh, negative. Right? It's called an uh, unlike charge. If they put uh, close to each other, they are going to uh, attract. So the force will be uh, to the center of the of the combination. So this is called a like charges will attract. The opposite, if they are the same, the positive positive or negative to negative, they are going to expand. So there will be a force between a pair of electric charges. So how large is the charge? How do you determine the quantity of the charge, uh, the force? The force is proportional to the quantity of the electric charge. That means the larger the charge, the larger the force. And also inversely proportional to the distance, uh, to the square of the distance between them. So for example, the distance is one, suppose the force equals one, no matter what unit it is. So now if you double the distance, The force will be, it is uh, proportion, inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So if you double the distance, that means you four times the square of the distance. So the force will be reduced to a quarter. Does that make sense? So you double the distance, then you only have a quarter of the original force. Right? If you double the charge, they double the force. It's proportional to the force, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if you write in a mathematical formula, it is F equals uh, so Q1 times Q2, and Q1 and Q2 represent the charge for, the, for both. Right? Divided by the D squared. D is the distance between these two. Then we need to times some constant, so you can times K between them, uh, before that. 
Okay, any questions? So the force is directly proportional to the charge, and the force is inversely uh, proportional to the square of the distance. Right? Okay, now, suppose we have two uh, structures. Right? They are in parallel. One is on the left, another is on the right. So suppose we put some positive charges on the left, and we put some negative charges on the right structure. Right? We form a structure like this. So we can Think if you have a charge in between, uh, for example, if this charge is positive, and because we have positive char charges here, we have negative charges here. If you put a positive charge in in the middle, then this charge will be expelled by this, right? And attracted by this, so the charge will move from the left to the right. So if you put a positive charge, here. if you put a negative charge here, then it will expel by this and attract by this. Okay. So the char negative charge or electron will move in this way. Okay. Uh, there is a concept is called the electric field. Okay. We won't discuss the details here. You are going to learn this in physics 202. Okay. Electric charge. You may already know this in, in high school physics uh, kind of introduction. Right? Anyone knows this electric field? Okay. So if you have positive charge, you have negative charge. Then we can draw some lines. Uh, like here, uh, those lines represent uh, electric lines. Uh, the density of these lines, for example, if you have a very dense, represents uh, the amplitude of the electric field. The denser, the larger of the electric field. Uh, if the lines are very uh, coarse, not that dense, then the electric field will be small. And also the arrows represent the direction of the electric field. So electric field always in the direction from the positive charge to the negative charge. Uh, so in this case, all these are your electric lines, electric field lines. Now, suppose we have a positive charge here. We said if we leave the charge here, the charge will move from the right left to the right. But how about if we want to move this charge, positive charge, from the right to the left? Uh, we need to go this way, so that means we need to apply force to overcome the electric force. Right? And we can move some distance from here. So we have a force, we need to apply force, and we move this proton or something positive charge for some distance, that means we need to do work. Right? So the W equals F times D, and the force times the distance. When force is applied over distance, work is done. Work done in moving charge against the electric field leads to the definition of voltage. So what is voltage? Voltage means, okay, as we said, we move the positive charge from right to left, we need to do the work. So suppose we know the quantity of the positive charge is Q. For example, we assume it is one unit, one unit quantity. Then we know we can calculate or we can measure how much work we can we need to do. <coughs> uh, so work needed to be done per unit charge is called the voltage. For each unit charge, the work needed to be done on this unit charge is called the voltage. So mathematically. Voltage equals the work divided by the electric charge. So voltage is the work per charge done against the electric field. Uh, the formula is uh, V for voltage. The unit is uh, we mentioned last time, right? W. W, work. Oh, right? V, right? for short, V. The symbol is V. Right? The symbol is V, the unit is volt, right? the quantity is a voltage. So we need to distinguish between all these three. Right? V is the symbol, volt is the unit, voltage is the, is the variable. Right? And W is uh, the 
the variable is a work. The unit is a joules. Perfect. And the label is a the label for the variable is W. Mm -hmm. The label for the unit is a J. 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 Okay, so you need to read the, uh, the first chapter. Right? So the J, right? joules. And the Q represents the electric charge, which is the variable. Right? Q, the label is Q, the unit is a column. Right? And uh, so what it equals? Uh, the joules divided by the coulombs. Uh, one volt is the potential difference. Here, there's a, another concept. It's called potential. Uh, we won't discuss the details here. Uh, so we only need to know the potential difference is called the voltage. Uh, because the potential is a, a concept that we have discussed in electromagnetics. So high level, so uh, also physics. We don't use the mention confuse you here. Right? So voltage is the difference between the potential. Uh, the voltage between two points when one joule of energy is used to move one column of charge from one point to the other. May I ask a question? Does the distance matter here? We said from point A to point B. How far it? I move the charge from here to here, or from here to all the way to the other side? Yes. Eh? Yeah, it does. So the distance does the distance have contribution to the voltage? Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Look at this formula again. Okay. Okay. Look at the formula again. Okay. The voltage equals uh, the work we need to be done divided by the the electric charge. Where is the distance? Uh, the distance is in work. So the distance actually is not directly affect the the, the voltage. Eh? If you are far away, the distance is large, then your force may be small. So still force times distance still gives us constant number. Okay, so that's why there's no distance here. Okay? The only thing we care is uh, for unit charge, for unit Q, how much work we should down move the charge from one place to another place. That's it. No matter how far away, how close they are. Does that make sense? So you need to only uh, understand this formula. So v equals W divided by the charge. Okay? Give you a quantity of a charge. How much work you should, you should do to the, to the charge to move from one place to another place. That's it. So why voltage is useful? Right? In our class, we need to discuss voltage a lot of times. In the labs, you also need to. Right? There is even a meter to measure the voltage. So why voltage is uh, useful? So anyone of you has known a voltage before? Where? In your where? Alex. Huh? Alex. I mean, for example, your daily life, show me. Where is the world? Huh? Solar panels. Solar panels. Okay, so you buy solar, okay. Batteries, right? And you drive a car. Okay, the car battery. What is the voltage in the car battery? 12 volts. Volt. What is the bat what's the voltage for you this one? Probably 650, 900 volts, probably. 950 volts? <laughs> no, millivolts. Millivolt, okay, I believe maybe like 3.7 or something. That is a lithium, okay? So, that's just, uh, right? <laughs> there, there's a battery inside, so usually it's like, a, for example, for your laptop battery, it may be like a, some maybe 19.5 or like something like this, DC voltage. Uh, but any, how to generate this voltage? Better, right? Yeah. So how to fabricate the better? A easy way is this one. Huh? Uh, for example, we have some uh, liquid here, or chemicals. Uh, we put a copper here, and we put, we put a zinc bar here. Huh? Everybody knows this before, right? 
in high school chemistry? No. No? no. Okay, now we discuss a little bit more. Right? So you put some of these two here. So suppose you put only copper here. We know the copper has only two uh, electrons on the valence shell. So this one will lose. Right? So we will lose, that means uh, uh, the copper will be minus two. So this is the plus, right? Okay, so you know, this is minus two. Right? If you put only copper bar inside. This is the zinc. Right? If you put only the zinc inside this liquid chemical, right? so also will be minus. Right? But uh, if you put these two at the same time, so one is uh, easier to lose. Uh, one will be more difficult than the other. So look at here. Uh, I think here, look at here. If you put this one and uh, the ions, uh, copper ions, will get electrons and will change into a copper here. So this one, the copper bar will be thicker and thicker. Uh, in contrast, this uh, zinc bar will be smaller and smaller. And this process gives us a 0 0.34, uh, like a one third volt of voltage. And this process gives us like 0.76. And these two combined together give us a 1.1. Uh, so this process gives us uh, this structure is a better. So you just put two. Uh, I think you do. Uh, when you are little, you, you have done some like project, okay? You have a potato, you put two drops inside, okay, that can drive uh, like a little LED ball or something. Right? So that's exactly the same thing as this one. Uh, but this one has stronger, so it has more power, uh, more electric charge. So that is what happened in the, in the car battery. Right? And this is a single shell, we have only one. Uh, this one gives us like 1.1. So that's not far not enough for, for our car. Our car needs 12. So you need to have several of these okay, 12 to come up with, to make a 12. But the principle is the same. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Right, so those are the uh, explanations we just discussed. Right? So you can read it by yourself. And this one is the, the car battery. We have multiple cells uh, to make a cell. Now, somebody said, okay, if you buy a new battery, uh, your old one, instead, I buy a new one. So I will claim I have more electric charge inside. No, you have no I don't have any electric charge inside. So, do I have, because that's brand new, right? More powerful. Do I have electricity, more electricity inside? So what is inside of the battery? Just chemicals. Just chemicals, okay. So that is, Perfect. No? We do not have any. Okay, maybe that's not exact correct. Uh, not correct, but we don't have a electricity stored in the battery. Eh? What we have is a chemical. So if you have a closed loop, eh? if you close this two, eh? connect this one to the positive, this one to the negative, you have closed loop. Eh? Apply a load to this battery. Then the process uh, on the last slide. Go. So this one do us a, a, a better. So at this point, uh, we do not connect anything. We do not have electricity. Uh, what we have is only chemicals. Uh, so chemis, uh, chemical energy is inside. Once this battery is uh, uh, depleted, no energy, no, no energy, uh, no electricity anymore. So we want to recharge this one. What process is that? Right? Recharge means uh, I connect this one, so this is positive, this is negative. I will connect this positive to a positive, right? Negative to negative, then that one is uh, a source. So we will recharge this one. So what process is this? 
So you convert uh, the electricity from your source into a battery. Into something in the battery. What thing? What energy? Chemical energy, right? So you reverse the process as we discussed before. So you store the chemical energy inside this uh, fresh battery. And if you want to use it, you convert this chemical energy into electricity. So this is just the conversion between energies. Uh, we do not store actually the, the, the electricity inside. Does this make sense? Any further questions on this? For example, if you uh, make your the simple battery with a, a potato, right? and you keep drive your, your LED, right? then what happens the later time for after a long time? Uh, it's turned off. Yeah, what happened? The chemi the the chemicals inside the uh, the potato is gone, right? It's no more a potato anymore. It's okay, so then the energy is gone. The chemical energy is gone. Okay, so rather than seeing charging a battery, uh, charging, it is more accurate to see reversing the chemical reaction in the battery. Uh, and we would like to see if we convert your electricity from the other source back into the chemical energy. Uh, we have some other <coughs> batteries, for example the fuel cell, eh? and again we don't discuss the details here. This is, uh, uh, we have a class before, it's called a renewable energy. Right? So this, guy, this is called fuel cells. We have oxygen and hydrogen and put together eh, by some structures, and they are going to combine and give us the electricity, and at the same time, the product is water. Huh? So this is a clean energy. We do not have any carbon dioxide. This, so this is good. Right? So <coughs> if you are interested in the textbook, we have more details for this part. OK, now suppose we have a battery here. Huh? We would consider this one as a voltage source. So ideally, what is a voltage source? An ideal voltage source will be, for example, <coughs> I'm not quite sure if you have this experience before. Right? So for example, at home, you connect, you have a light box to, your, to, to this one here. If you turn on only one, you see the brightness. Then if you turn on a lot, for example, 10 or 20, what? So it is uh, the light, uh, the brightness will be slightly decreased, right? Dimmer, right? Anyone has this experience before? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if, for example, right now you have 20, you, you are used to the brightness. Now you turn for another five, you see only this one, it will be brighter than before, right? This only one. So what happened here? That means uh, the voltage source on the wall is not ideal because if you use more energy the voltage will be dropped you drop it right? if you use less energy for example you have only one light bulb on then the voltage will be higher so that means that source is not ideal so in real life there's no ideal voltage source okay? but uh, for discussion sometimes for approximation we would like to have an idea for ideal voltage source. Ideal voltage source means the voltage is constant. No matter how, what kind of load you connect to it, the voltage is always constant. And on the wall, we would like the constant 110. And for your like a battery, AE size battery, that is a alkaline battery is 1.5, right? Rechargeable battery is 1.2. For the car battery is 12. We want this one to be a constant. So that is called ideal voltage. Uh, the IV curve, V means voltage, I means the current. Right? So if we have, a voltage, we have a battery, we connect it to a load, that is called a circuit. Later time we are going to discuss this, how to calculate the current, how to calculate the, everything for this. 
but now you have only this basic idea. You have a voltage here, voltage source, you connect it to a load, then you have a formed a closed loop. Right? Then there will be current flowing through this loop. Right? That current is, is this current. Yeah? And the voltage is here. For ideal voltage source, we would like to, it looks like this. No matter how you change your load current or source current, the voltage is constant. That is the ideal case. Any questions on this? Okay, so you understand this IV curve, right? Yeah. In the labs, you may want to, uh, I'm not quite sure, okay, you may need to draw this IV curve, right? So you, you, you are given a circuit, you measure the voltage, you measure the current, for each point, then you draw all these points, then you uh, draw the curve. Now, I will let you think. For our non-ideal voltage source, what do you expect the RV curve? It is the approximate, so like, uh, like this, or like this, or like what? How, how to, to approximate uh, for non-ideal? We already mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. If you use uh, more energy, that means the current is large, then the voltage will drop. So you can see the light bulb will be a little yeah. bit dim. So that means the larger the voltage, uh, sorry, the larger the current, the smaller the voltage. Oh, yes. Right? So that is the real case. So in this case, the larger will be smaller, so what you draw is supposed to be like, uh, like this, right? Yeah. So that is the real case. So in the labs, if you need to, plot this RV curve. If you give me this one, it looks like a not correct. Huh? You should give me something like, a, like this. Huh? Maybe it curves more, huh? depends on different source, maybe it curves less, but no way you can get exactly like this. Yeah. That is the idea. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Yes? The current and the voltage. So in the lab, for example, I'll give you a circuit, right? So you, you, you can measure the current with the current meter, the amp, right? And you, at the same time, you measure the voltage. I use the voltmeter. How to measure this, we are going to discuss in detail later time, but now you just a brief idea. So you can measure the voltage, you can measure the current for the same time, for the same configuration. Right? Or for the same point on this uh, RV plane. So once you get this one, for example, what is equal here, current equal here, then you put the dot here. Right? For what is equal this and the current equal this, then you put the dot here. Then you draw a lot of dots, then you trace this one, we have a curve. That is the RV curve. Right? Good question. Right? So uh, later time, we are going to learn how to measure the voltage, how to measure the current, how to do this. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Do you have to convert the voltage to one gram, or do they stay the same? Uh, what do you mean? Like when you measure the current, do you have to convert it to a certain uh, measurement, or? Uh, so usually, they just use a, uh, you mean the unit, right? Yeah. So, so it doesn't matter. For example, you can use uh, this is a volt that is uh, amperes, right? Or you can use a milliampers or something. Usually, this doesn't matter. It depends on the application. If the current is large, you're going to use A. If the current is very, very small, you can use a, uh, M, A, or micro A. So. Would it be still the same if the Yeah, still the same. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? It's good? Okay. Uh, in practice, ideal sources do not exist, but they can be closely approximated by actual sources. We mentioned at the beginning, if we have positive charge, we have negative charge, we are going to uh, form an electric line. Right? If for each point in the electric field, there's a potential. He said, okay, we don't care about the potential. But if you have a two point, that gives us a potential difference, right? That gives us the voltage. The potential difference is the voltage. 
If you have a closed loop between these two points, uh, like in the battery, you have positive, you have negative. When you buy the new battery at home, they, they are two not connected. Right? You connect these two batteries, that batteries to your car, you connect, you close the positive and negative terminals. So that is called closed loop. If you have closed loop, then we are going to have a current. Right? So what is current? We just mentioned that it's the voltage, we know that, right? So what is the current? If you have closed loop, you are going to have current. If you don't have closed loop, you don't have current. When you buy the battery, eh, these two with a, a cap, right? They are not connected. The media in between is the air. We assume air is a perfect uh, insulator. So that's not closed loop. There will be no current. Uh, you won't lose any uh, energy. So the current is the amount of a charge that flows past a point uh, in the unit of time. If you close this, then the electric charge will flow along this uh, closed loop. Uh, at any unit time, one second, we can count or we can measure how many charges are passing through the, the closed loop. Right? So the quantity of the electric charge pass through a point or a closed loop in a unit of time is called the current. Right? So the current equals Q divided by T. Question on this? Okay, let's recall. What is the voltage? What is V? V equals a work divided by the Q, right? Okay, now the I equals a Q divided by T. Okay? So for example, if you want to uh, bring this uh, fixed number of charge from here to there, if you bring this one very quickly, in a short time, then the current must be very large, right? If you do this slowly, in a long time, one day, then this current will be very, very small. Right? So the current equals the charge divided by the time. Uh, one ampere is the number of electrons having a total charge of one C column, right? Uh, moving through a given cross section in one second. Right? Okay, like this. Cross section. Okay, now we have a question. What is the current if two columns of a charge passes a point in five seconds? What is the current? How you calculate this? Use a... This is the current. That's what we want, right? This one is a Q, right? This is a T. So the current I equals a Q divided by T. So equals a 2 divided by 5. And all here, both units are standard unit. C, T. So we, we don't need to write. You just the I equals a C over, uh, sorry, Q over T equals a 2 over 5. If you like, you can write the unit to C over 5 T, but not necessary because we are using the standard unit. Then equals a 0 0.4, 0 0.4 what? Uh, ampere. Amperes, okay? You need to put at the end the unit A. Okay. Uh, so the solution is a Point four. So, can you do it by yourself this kind of question? Yes. And calculate the voltage, calculate the current. As in ideal voltage source, we may also have an ideal current source. And the concept is exactly the same. So, my question is, uh, can you draw the IV curve for an uh, ideal current source? Like this? Yes. Who agree with this? So it's horizontally flat, right? Yes. Who agree with this? 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 Yes. Who agree with
agree with this? Right? Okay, good. So everybody agree with this, right? So it is horizontal. Yes. No matter how you change the voltage, the current is constant. So that is called the ideal current source. This idea is uh, this idea is important, right? Ideal voltage source, current source, because at later time, you and um, seniors, right? Juniors, you still for circuit analysis, you still need to use this kind of concept. Right? So current source means the current is constant. Uh, voltage source means the voltage is constant. That's it. Uh, the IV curve for an ideal current source is constant. Uh, horizontal. Perfect. Uh, current source is not easy to make a current source compared to a voltage source. Ideal. Uh, so in the labs, we have a current source. Uh, voltage source, you already have more voltage sources. So, but these are the, uh, we don't have this equipment in the labs, but we have maybe same right? So here, this looks like a current source, this one looks like uh, uh, the instrument, the meter that can measure current. Right? Um, we have our set, so in the labs you can, in the first several labs, you may need to be familiar with the equipment, because later time, you will be here for four years, you are going to use all those equipment. So, any questions? Is everything good? Okay. Uh, if you have questions, eh, you are more than welcome to ask here. Because if you have any questions, uh, I suggest you solve this one as here. Let's make our study much more efficient. Uh, you do not think, okay, later time I don't understand this, but I will read textbook. Yeah, reading textbook is good, but better to understand Try to understand everything here first, the later time you really can. It's much easier. I know you have like a 17 hours or even more. Eh? Uh, I know it's not easy, right? So try to solve the problems in the class, and not wait until later time. And you, if you have any questions, solve in each class. You don't know, okay, I have, we have midterms. I will study before the midterm, that will be too late. Because every class has midterm, so you are going to have trouble. Make sense? Alright, next one is uh, resistance. I believe some of you may already have this idea. Anyone has an idea what resistance is? Okay, so if something we do not connect, uh, for example, we said we connect these two terminals of the battery together. So if you do not connect, uh, the resistance will be very long, right? Yeah. So what exactly resistance is? Ohms. Huh? Yeah, ohms. Okay, that's the unit. Perfect. So we use ohms. Uh, the resistance equals one ohm, two ohms. Okay, one mega ohms. Uh, okay, like this. If you are said disconnected, the resistance equals uh, infinity. It's very long, right? If you short, uh, you connect directly, the resistance equal to uh, zero. Right? So <coughs> that one is not. Uh, you need to be very very careful. Right? Never short a uh, source. Like for example, you have a battery, A A battery, right? Alkaline battery. If you use a copper wire to connect directly the positive and the negative. Anyone has done this before? Yeah. 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 What happened? Yeah. Okay, you are going to burn, you will feel the battery is very, very hot quickly, right? And also, if the copper wire is very thin, it snaps. It's maybe, it's very hot, yeah. okay? So, you may, that kind of <coughs> you, may yeah. you may get fire. That's how you get free power for life. So don't short the, Source. Uh, in the labs, be careful, be careful, be careful. Don't short the labs. So when you connect anything, you need to be, be sure, right? Check, double check what you are doing. You connect this two point, right? You just don't connect. Yeah. And you think, what are this? Is this positive or this negative of the battery? Then 
you are going to be in trouble. Right? I know you always have trouble. Right? Even I mentioned several times, but uh, try to uh, to think before you do it, especially at the first several weeks. Uh, several weeks. Uh, so what exactly resistance is? Uh, okay, it is the opposition to current. That means to try to resist the current. Uh, if your resistance is large, that means the current is not used to get large. Uh, because it's opposite to the current. If your resistance is small, then the current may be large. So that is not what exactly does that mean? So for example, if you have the 12 volt car battery, you connect to a, a resistor. What the resistor? Resistor is something element with a resistance. And that's easy to understand. If your resistance is large, then the current will be small. If your resistance is small, then your current is large. For the same value of voltage, uh, they are related by something else, but uh, we are going to discuss next time. Right? So resistance is the opposition to current. That's the definition. One ohm is the resistance if one ampere of current uh, is in the material when one volt is applied. Right? So for example, if you have a battery, the voltage is one volt, suppose. Right? Now, if you have wire in between, this wire has some like resistance, not a perfect, not a perfect wire. Uh, there's a resistance inside. If you measure the current equals one, eight, then the resistance equals one. Right? So that's the definition of one. Questions on this? Good. Now the concept is called conductance. Uh, that is opposite to resistance. Uh, it is the reciprocal of resistance. So G means conductance equals 1 over R, which is the resistance. The unit of resistance is O. What is the unit of a conductance? S. What, what does S mean here? S is correct. Right? S is the symbol. What is S? Siemens. Right? Or you can see 1 over O. Right? But the unit is the symbol. Right? So this is a real kind of, right? A real resistor. Right? You can see inside, uh, we, have, we, have, uh, we have different materials. Right? And uh, this one is one terminal, this one is another terminal. Right? That's the, called a two-part device. Right? And uh, this column bars tell us how large is this. Uh, huh? For engineering technology, if you just read this color bars, you know okay, how large is this resistance. Or you can directly use the meter to measure this. And this uh, here, you can see if we connect this one to a source, connect this one to a source, then the current will flow through this one. Right? And there's a resistance um, to the current. Component designs will have a specific amount of resistance are called resistors. Uh, in the left, you're going to see a lot of resistors. Uh, big ones, small ones, uh, different shapes. Right, here is the, the color bars. On the, uh, you use a, the, if you look at the color bars here, how many bars do we have here? We have four here. Okay. So the, we have three groups here. Okay. No matter we have four, we may we, we have five. Okay. We have four groups here. Uh, the last one is one group. The second from the last is another group. 
than all others at the front is compatible. The last one tells us the accuracy of this. For example, you said this equals one kilo ohm. Not, cannot be exactly equals one kilogram, right? Maybe plus minus five percent, or maybe plus minus ten percent. That is real life. That is possible. So this, the last color bar tells us what's the accuracy. Okay? So for, I think they have a gold, silver, and uh, no bar. No bar means uh, gold means uh, plus minus five percent. Silver means plus minus ten percent. Gold is better than the silver, right? Okay, then if there's no bar, then it means like 20% or something. So we have details in the textbook. The next one, the second one from the last, is the exponent. Or in scientific representation, it is the power of the 10. Right? Then the all others, just the significant digit. They use different colors to represent different numbers. Right? So later time we are going to learn this, and in the lab, so the first lab, familiar with the equipment, the second one is the reading of the color bars. Right? Uh, for example, the first three digits represent one, two, three. Suppose, right? The, the next one represents the four. And the last one represents, for example, gold is five percent. So one, two, three, Five, what does that mean? Uh, I said four, right? One, two, three, first three, then the next one is four. So how large is this one? It will be 123, no decimal here, 123 times 10 to the four ohms. Okay? So that will be 1.23 mega ohm, right? Easy, right? So you just memorize the first several represent the significant digit. Uh, the second from the last represent the power. And the last one represent the, the accuracy, right? the precision. All right, now black represents zero, brown represents one, right? red represents two, orange three, yellow four, right? green five, blue six, violet seven, green eight, and white represents. So they give you bars to represent it, right? And gold represents five plus minus five percent. And the silver means ten percent. Okay, no band means twenty percent. Right? So you can expect if you have like a uh, no band, right? That means it's rated it's rated for example one K, right? It can be as less as uh, as small as eight hundred or one K is one thousand, right? So it can be as small as 800, or can be as large as 1,200, 1, so if there's no bar. If there's a silver, that means it's 10% plus or minus. So if it's rated at 2K, then the possible range of the resistance is, uh, suppose it's 2K, plus or minus 10. So the minimum possible is uh, 2,000 plus minus 10%. 1,800 to 20, 22, right? So 10% means 10% uh, of 2,000 is 200. So from 2,000 minus 200, which is 1,800, that's the smallest possible. Uh, the largest possible is 2,000 plus 200, which is 2,200. So that's possible. Right? Um, if uh, gold, that is plus or minus 5. So you can see, uh, if it's gold, it will be smaller range. Silver is larger range. And the no band gives the la largest. Uh, any question on that? When you choose, uh, you want to decide which one you want to use. If you want to design a project that you need, those numbers must be right, kind of accurate, then you are going to spend more money to buy this uh, gold uh, rating. Uh, if you think, just try, okay, just play for fun, then you can just use this one. It's uh, cheaper. Uh,
you need to memorize this uh, color box. What is the uh, gray? Five. Uh, at the beginning, you may need to have, have like a okay, piece of paper you can compare. But the later time, if you work in this field, electrical, uh, as uh, engineers or technicians, you need to uh, look at this, then you know inside. Right? So you need to memorize this. Okay, resistance value, the first of three band, right? first band is one digit, first digit, second band is second digit, the third band right, is the multiplier. Okay, so you're at the four color. Okay? The third band is the multiplier. The numbers of the zeros following the second digit. Oh, we said the power to the 10. Same thing, right? One, two, three. Actually, there's no three, so there's only two. So one, two followed by four zeros. Or oh, so one, two times 10 to the power of four. Same thing. And the fourth band is the tolerance, right? Ten percent, five percent, or ten. For resistance values less than ten ohms, the third band is either gold or silver. <coughs> gold is for a multiplier of zero point one, and silver is for a multiplier of zero point zero one. Right? So this is special because the value is. Just too little, so you need more accurate to be able to find the efficiency. If you have a textbook or something, you can read what is the resistance and the tolerance of each of these four bands. Oh, what's the first one? Let's try. Okay. What's the first one? Uh, from the left to right, right? So we start from, uh, from the left. So the first one is green, right? What the green is? Five. What's the second one? One. That is brown, right? Brown is one. So five, one. What's the next one? Red. Red represents what? Two. So five, one, zero, zero. Two, zero, right? And uh, so that is uh, 5,100 ohms, or 5.1 5 k. Uh, what is the last one? That's gold, right? Five percent. So if I give you the first one, I ask you, what is the minimum possible value of the resistance? Minus 5%. So can you do it right now? Huh? What is the minimum value of the, what is the minimum possible value of the resistance for the first one? Huh? What is it? Four thousand eight hundred forty. How did you do that? I got the top percent of the five one zero zero. Five one zero zero, and I subtracted that. You subtract from five one zero zero. Oh, you can just the five one zero zero times zero point nine five, right? Mm -hmm. So you minus five percent, so you still have a ninety-five percent left. Yes, so fifty-one hundred times. Uh, 95%. Yeah. So that is that's why. Eh? Question on that? So can you calculate what's the maximum possible value for this one? Plus five. So five one zero zero times one point zero five. Yep. Right? Yes. So what is five one zero zero? Five one zero zero. Okay, the first one, the green. Look at the table, green means five. The second one is brown. Look at the table, brown means one. So the value is a five, one for the first two colors. Right? Five, one. No decimals, just five, one. Then the next one is red. Red means two in the table. So that means a five, one followed by two zeros. So five, one, zero, zero. 
So that is the way. Okay? Does it make sense? Everybody clear? Then the next, the last band is a good. That means tolerance of 5%. So it means the maximum value of this one will be 5100. We already get this from the first several bands. Then multiply by 1.05. 5% more than this. So the minimum will be 5100 times 95%. Because 1 minus 5% equals 95%. So 5100 times 0 0.95. That is the minimum. So the range is like from somewhere to somewhere. So up and down by 5% from the 5100. Does that make sense? Which one has the least tolerance? Me, which one looks like the, the cheapest? Huh? The last one, right? What's the tolerance of the last one? 20%. 20 Why? Because there's no band for that, right? The other two in the middle are zero, so 10%. Okay. Any question on, on uh, doing this? Uh, homework? You are going to practice this. I right? give you a color band. I'll ask you what's the maximum, what's the minimum, like this. Right? Uh, you need to know right now. Otherwise, you still need to right? to be able to do this. Huh? All right. So the first one is the five point one k ohm plus minus five percent. The second one, you don't need to. Okay. So you know how to do this. Uh, yes. Eight twenty k plus minus. Question on this? Yeah, that's one supposed to be 10%, right? Yeah. Alright. This one is good, right? Oh, yeah. This one? Mm. Oh, let's see. Which one is the last one? Oh, okay. So is, it, is 5 or 20? This one is the last one, right? So this one, so, so, so carbon is not very accurate, right? Can I see, right? This one, what, what color is it? Brown. Brown, one. This one is black, zero. Okay, one, zero. This gold, this, what, what's this one? Orange, or what, what color is this? Yellow. Okay. Yellow, so what is yellow? Four. Yellow is a... No, I don't think that's right. Oh, this one is very small, right? There's a special meaning for this. Look at the, what we just discussed. Because look, this value is very small. So the third one has a special here. So gold is multiplied by 0 0.1. Oh, okay. So that is the first two is what? 10, right? Yeah. One zero. So gold should cover. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. So the first of the two give us a one zero means ten, and the third code means a multiplier of point one. So that is ten times point one, which equals one. So that's why that's value equals one. And the last bar is gold, which means plus minus five percent. So one point zero plus minus five percent. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Good? Yes, sir. Right. So this one is special, right? Okay. So gold means uh, 0 0.1. Silver means uh, 0 0.01. 0 .01. If I change this one to a silver here, what is the value here? It will be 0 0.1 ohm, yeah. right? Okay, there are some other. Uh, alpha numeric uh, labeling, and uh, these two or three digits and one of the letter R, K, M are used to identify a resistant value. R means just O, right? K means uh, calorie, M means uh, uh, right? The letter used to indicate the multiplier, and the position is used to indicate decimal point, like 22R. It's 22 O. 2M2. The letter means the decimal. So 
2.2 2 2 2 what? Mac Right? This one is a 220 K. dot. Okay, stop here. Okay, no decimal. K. 220 K. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, let me ask you to write like a 2200. 2200. Oh. How to represent with this method? 2 k 2 Yes? Yes. Right? 2 k 2 Good. Perfect. Uh, some use this kind of labeling, so that's maybe easier. Right? Yeah. To, to read. Okay, we have some uh, of these kind of resistors. It's called variable resistors. Variable means the resistance uh, is uh, can be changed. Right? It's not fixed. So let's see for this one. Usually we have uh, three terminals. Right? So in this case, one, two, three. How to memorize this or how to understand this? You can imagine like this. You think of the material. Remember the this one here? Remember this one, right? So there's some inside, and there's some material uh, to resist the current. Okay, so all these things inside. Now, if you look at this, you can imagine uh, these are the materials. Uh, maybe actually, I think uh, I would. Uh, Prefer in this case, I think the materials will be from here to here. From here to here. Eh? You just forget this part, it's just from one to two. Now you turn this thing here, or oh, it's supposed to be like this. Okay? It's supposed to be like this. If you turn this thing, now this one is the common term. Eh? First of all, if you connect it to one to like this. Didn't see which one. It's one, two, three. It's supposed to give us one, two, three. Okay. From uh, one to two, that is uh, from this one to this point. Uh, one is here. Two is here. So that resistance is fixed. That means that resistance is from here to here. It's always like this. So once you get this resistor, it's already there. You cannot change. The variable part is uh, this one. If you move this one to here, that means we only care about the resistance from here to here. Now look at this. This one is connected to this one. That means, uh, okay, this one is directly to here. So. If you take the resistance from 1 to 3, that means you take the resistance from here to here. So this is only part of the total. Okay? That terminal 3 is this one. Three here. Okay? So you can turn this knob here. Okay? And if this one is at here, that means uh, this one here is to, to the left. So it will be small. Okay? If you turn this one all the way to the very close, or on here, then that is the maximum. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, we have uh, exactly this same thing in the left, so next time you go to there, you, then you can, you can play with this, yes? Yeah, one to two is the maximum. So you, if you connect from one, from the one to two, then that is the maximum. Yeah? And from one to here, that is only partial of this maximum. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah? You think from, where is the one to two? One to two is from one to two. So this one is fixed. If you connect to one and two, so this all is here. We cannot change. For example, it equals 10k, suppose. Yeah? Then, if you connect to one to three, now that depends where you put this, uh, this thing here, right? If this line is right in the middle, so that's look like a, you only care about from here to here, so this is a 5k. If you move this one to this side, then this resistance looks like a 2.5k. So you change this one, you turn this, you are going to control the resistance you can get. A lot of knobs like this one, the button, right? actually you control this thing. Questions on this? So, if you, you are given this kind of structure, you need to know what is the minimum resistance you can get. What is it? What's the minimum you can get? One. One? For this one? Because we are going to connect from here to here, right? From one to two, from one, so one to three. What is the minimum resistance you can get? How about these two points are connected? Zero, Zero right? So no resistance. That's the minimum you can get. What is the maximum you can get? That is just from here to here, the total, right? Yeah. So. This one usually, when you buy this, it will be rated with the maximum. For example, 10K. You know the maximum is 10K. And you can get any value from 0 to 10K. Any comments? Other comments? Look at this structure. I use the 1, 2, 3 here. Can I use 2 and 3? Yes. Yes, right? So two becomes one. Based on which one you like, you can connect the two and three. It's still yeah. same thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So look at the first one here. This one we use this point at this point. So this one looks like I'll connect to one to three. Look at this one. I use one and two here. I use these two terminals. So this looks like I only care about this part, right? If this one all the way to the left, the value takes the maximum. Because this one here, this arrow connect to here, so the maximum, so the resistance will be equal to 10 k. If this one all the way to the right, to this point, it is zero because this one is short. So if you are given this diagram, you should be able to read this. Uh, we studied the resistance of resistor. That means we already get the resistor. Now, suppose I ask you to make a resistor with a wire. I want to, for example, 1 ohm or 10 ohm. I'll give you a number I want you to make. How are you going to fabricate the resistor? For? If you still remember the structure, the 3D structure, inside just some materials used to resist the current. The wire here also the same thing. So I can cut a piece of a wire. Right? This one. Use this one as a resistor. No problem. That is just like the same thing. Uh, maybe that one is more effective. This one is less effective. It means less resistive to the current. But how to, if I give you a piece of a wire here, right? how to calculate the resistance from this point A to this point B. That is, uh, we are going to discuss. So the formula is the resistance equals the rho times error 
divided by a. L is the length uh, in meters. Mm -hmm. so give you this one. L equals one meter, so it equals one. A is the area of the cross section. What is the cross section? Cross section, you cut off this. What is the cross section? This is a, a circle, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a circle, although it's very small, but there's an area for this circle. So that is A. Right. Then there's a rule. Rho is called the resistivity of the material. So that is a constant for your particular material. For example, gold, silver, copper, iron, or everything, huh? even the air. Every matter has this resistivity. They are different. So for example, I'll give you the same length, the same res uh, cross section. Which one has the maximum, which one has more resistance? Gold, silver, and copper. Which one has more? Copper, copper right? So that means the rule for the copper is larger than the rule for the silver and for the, for the gold. The gold has the minimum, right? So that is, um, when you do this, usually there's a handbook or table. And you can check the numbers for this rule, right? That is uh, a resistivity. Okay, we are going to uh, stop here today, and we are going to continue this next time. Uh, keep in mind, the homework is due six, right? Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you.